Good morning, everyone. No, don't panic. I'm not preaching today. I'm just uh, killing some time here for till Pastor Carol gets here. We ran a little over in the service again this week. I don't know if anybody. Ah, uh, we got some folks getting on with us. If you want to put your send your prayer requests in any time throughout the service. Kylie will write them down and have them ready for Pastor Carol. I'm trying to learn her phone. I can't see who all's on there. So I'm just going to say a blanket good morning. My phone lets me know who it is that is on. Her phone she must recognize by your pictures that come up with your name. So, ah, hi Heather. Thank you. If you type it in, I'll know it's you. So, good morning Heather. Miss you. Was glad to see you last week. Stretch. I'm get I'm getting the uh, stretch, stretch. So Pastor Carol must really uh, still be out there because we had a special guest this He's week, and uh, Rich, who is a um, missionary. missionary in Guatemala. He's a missionary from our conference. Is visiting today, and um, he and Pastor Carol are doing. Um, a little thing and he's talking unfortunately Lulu wasn't able to be with him this time because she needed to get back to Guatemala but we need to be praying for the folks down down there there's gonna probably be tougher COVID restrictions in Guatemala and um, Rich and Lulu had to come here to get their vaccinations it was hard for them to be able to do anything down there without the vaccination so please um, keep those folks in your prayers Good morning, Joyce and Billy. You know, Billy, someday I'm going to bring Ernie out to see you. I tell him about you all the time. Stretch, stretch. And that, there's Karen in the background. Doesn't know how to turn down the sound. I you. <laughs> oh, boy. I could never be an on-air personality because, like on the Today Show or something, I'm not real good off the cuff. Um, but it is a wonderful 4th of July. Um, we're celebrating the freedom in our country, but we need to remember the freedoms that we celebrate every day, um, the freedom that comes through Jesus Christ. And I think if uh, some of us within the United States remember that, maybe we would be able to celebrate the freedoms that we have in this nation and realize how lucky we are. Um, it would go a long way. So um, keep our country in your prayers as well. I'm going to do a prelude. Before I do a prelude or something to get till Pastor Carol's ready, um, this week is uh, a week when there's a lot of changes that go on across the Western Pennsylvania Annual Conference. And pastors move to their new appointment and they are celebrated, celebrated for um, being there for their first Sunday. And it's been a while for us um, especially at Grove Avenue, to have a pastor that's been here more than a year and a half. So this morning we celebrated Pastor Carol and um, did a little thing and prayed for her and everything. And I just want to um, encourage you to make notes uh, welcoming Pastor Carol back for another year. It's hard because when we first celebrated her coming to the charge, she came with John. And so it was a little bit bittersweet to celebrate with her this morning, knowing that she's soloing it now. But she's not soloing it totally because she's got all of us to support her. And most especially, Jesus is her uh, co-minister. But we want to celebrate that Pastor Carol is back with us for another year. And right on cue is when she walked in on that one. So if you want to send greetings to her along with your... Um, prayer requests. That would be wonderful because she reads this stuff later on. She tries to, she said. Did you need to breathe or anything? No, I need you to anoint the rich. Oh, I'm going to switch seats and here's Pastor Carol. <laughs> oh, good morning. You know, we're a little crazy here. Um, <laughs> a, little. No, a lot crazy. And uh, Rich Maraska is with Grove Avenue today, and he'll be with Homestead in a, um, at 11. And Rich is a uh, volunteer in mission in Guatemala, and he's home for a little while. 
Um, and I wanted him to talk a little bit about call and his call that God has placed on his life. So you're not going to get to hear Rich. He is still talking, and I left him high and dry, which is probably not a very good thing to someone you've invited. But um, I just have to say something humorous before I get started. And he said that uh, a lot of the people in the Guatemala don't even have a, um, a bed. And that made me think of our dear friend Karen All's house, because she doesn't have a bed right now. <laughs> Deb threw it out <laughs> with the trash. <laughs> So, so <laughs> she's, <gonna get> you. <laughs> she's uh, <laughs> Karen's laughing if you can't hear her. She's laughing. I couldn't resist that, Karen. <laughs> but we are so glad you were with us this morning on Facebook worship. And if you have prayer requests, please send them in. Um, and uh, before we um, start, I just have some words. Um, Glory to God who is able to do far beyond all that we could ask or imagine by his power at work within us. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus for all generations, forever and always. We have a prelude this morning, and I left my list somewhere else. Karen gives me a list, and then I forget. But please prepare your hearts to worship. Every week we gather to remember God's love as we celebrate God's presence in our lives and in the world. Our God is good. Our God is with us forever. Our God's love never ends. 
We are the church. We are important to God. God is alive and weaving us into a community of faith, teaching us how to love and challenging us to grow and to serve. Here we are. Lord, use us. Use us to proclaim your great love. Let us pray. Oh, thank you, loving God, for bringing us here to this time of worship. Illumine us, purify us, and shine through us. Refresh us and heal us again. Remind us of our many blessings. Guide our hearts and spirits to hear your words so that your soul, so our souls may be stirred into active service to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Our first reading today is from 2 Timothy, and Billy Murphy is reading. I will be reading this morning from 2 Timothy, chapter 4, verses 1 through 8. The Apostle Paul writes to Timothy as Paul's days are drawing to an end. Paul has kept the faith, even though it was a struggle, and some of his supporters have abandoned him. He encourages others to endure, to remain faithful, and to gain the prize. I'm giving you this commission in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is coming to judge the living and the dead, and by his appearance and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be ready to do it whether it is convenient or inconvenient. Correct, confront, and encourage with patience and instruction. There will come a time when people will not tolerate sound teaching. They will collect teachers who say what they want to hear because they are self-centered. They will turn their back on the truth and turn to myths. But you must keep control of yourself in all circumstances, endure suffering, do the work of a preacher of the good news, and carry out your service fully. I'm already being poured out like a sacrifice to God, and the time of my death is near. I have fought the good fight, finished the race, and kept the faith. At last, the champion's wreath that is awarded for righteousness is waiting for me. The Lord, who is the righteous judge, is going to give it to me on that day. He's giving it not only to me, but also to all those who have set their heart on waiting for his appearance. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And Denise will be singing hallelujah. Your love makes me 
steady and unchanging. Your love is a mountain from beneath my feet. Your love is a mystery, how you gently lift me when I am surrounded. Your love carries me. Christ's love makes us sing. Uh, today's scripture reading is from Ephesians chapter 3, verses 15 to 19. So hear these words. Every ethnic group in heaven or on earth is recognized by Christ. I ask that he will strengthen you in your inner selves from the riches of his glory through the Spirit. I ask that Christ will live in your hearts through faith. As a result of having strong roots in love, I ask that you'll have the power to grasp love's width and length, height and depth, together with all believers. I ask that you'll know the love of Christ that is beyond knowledge, so that you will be filled entirely with the fullness of God. These are the words of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, one Sunday morning, a pastor was trying to excite his congregation from moving from being a spectator into active ministry. So he prayed all week that the Lord would open the eyes of the folks. And Sunday morning came and he was chomping at the bit to, to give his best, to deliver the word. So with great passion, he told the congregation, if we answer God's call to love and to serve, this church will move from crawling to walking. And the people responded enthusiastically, let the church walk, pastor, let the church walk. Oh yeah, thought the pastor. The Lord has answered my prayers. They're getting it. And so he continued, and when the church walks, next the church can run. And the people shouted, let the church run, pastor. Let the church run. And the pastor, oh, he was getting so excited. He was beside himself as he continued. And finally, and finally, the church can move from running to soaring. The church can soar. But of course, that's going to take a commitment from every one of you to make it happen. The congregation drew, became deadly silent. And from the back of the church, he heard a small voice say, let the church crawl, pastor. Let the church crawl. You know, I just have to tell you that Rich this morning at Grove Avenue said that, you know, sometimes he's lazy. You know, we kind of, especially since COVID, we're, we're used to just hunkering down and staying at home. But there's never been a better opportunity to serve. But the problem in the church is, even in the good days, the body of Christ does not seize the opportunity to love and to serve. About 80% of the church work is done by 20% of the members. There's just a small band in every church that's the pillar of the church. 
and they do most of the work. And so when something needs to be done, who do we go to? We go to that 20%. So why do we always go to the same people? Why are we apathetic when it comes to things of God, when it comes to serving God and getting involved in the ministry of the church? Maybe we don't understand that we're all called to be ministers of Jesus Christ. We're called to, to love God's people and to serve God by serving others. There's never a time for us to sit back and relax. God is continually calling us to action, continually calling us to move closer to God through spiritual disciplines, acts of piety like worship and prayer and Bible studies and journaling and holy conferencing to move closer to God through acts of mercy, serving in the name of Christ by visiting people, by walking with others, by reaching out to the community. And as we serve, God will continually mold us and shape us so that we become more Christ-like and so that we love even more and that we're even more willing to serve. You know, we're busy people. We're busy doing this and that. We're busy doing nothing sometimes. And our busyness sidetracks us from living into our baptismal vows to faithfully participate in the life and the ministries of our local congregation through our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. How can we go beyond the words we profess to actually living out the vows? That's what we've been talking about for the last six weeks. What would it look like if we carved out time in our busy schedules to make our vows a priority? What would happen if we discern God's call on our lives and answered that call? Well, as I said, Rich had um, mentioned a word, and I'm, I'm guilty. I'm lazy sometimes. And as I said, things have gotten worse with COVID. And we don't want our routines, our schedules, our preferences, our free time disturbed. And so we miss the blessing of serving others in the name of God. We miss out on times of fellowship. We miss out on being stretched. We miss out by walking closer with God. You know, we are called to be servants. And we are not saints. We are ordinary people who have just said yes to God. Servants are folks like you and me. Um, this morning, Rich told um, about his time, how he ended up in Guatemala as a volunteer in mission. Rich was one of my parishioners at the United for God Cooperative. He came out of the Kramer United Methodist Church, and uh, he was an electrician for the mine workers, and he had a good life. He had trucks and cars and boats and house, and, you know, he had, he had things. And he sold all those. He sold it all. He shipped what little bit he had to Guatemala. He shipped a motorcycle so he could get around Guatemala. Guess what happened? It was seized by customs and wouldn't be released. So he lost his motorcycle. And still he saved, stay in, in Nicaragua. When it became unsafe to be in Nicaragua anymore, Rich and his wife, who he met in Nicaragua, Lulu moved to Guatemala um, and they are busy at work um, serving God's people there. Uh, he talked this morning about a program with chickens that they lay eggs, chickens for laying eggs and chickens for slaughter and how it's providing money because the women in Guatemala don't even have birth certificates. So they're looking at uh, sustainable ministries to help women um, get some money and be able to support themselves and have some more control over their destiny. Well, most of us are not called to leave our homes and travel to a strange land to serve God. But what are we called to do? How are we being called to serve the Lord? How are we being called to serve God's people, both individually and collectively? How are we being called? 
how do we proclaim the love of Christ? Well, if, if you're um, part of the CGH charge, you know, you can help with the free store. You can help with hope-filled relationships. You can work with kids. We have a camp on the go coming up the end of July, and they need volunteers. You can participate in worship. You know, there's a lot of ways you can, can serve. I have a former parishioner who I whose name is Paula, who I love dearly. And Paula has a ministry. She has to take the bus wherever she goes. And when she works in Richland and she lives in the West End, that's two buses. And it's a long time on the bus. And I would not want to be on the bus that long. But she has taken it as an opportunity. She doesn't see it as an inconvenience. It's an opportunity. It's an opportunity to share the love of Christ by building relationships. Wow. So what kind of opportunities do we have? How can we share that love of Christ? How can we serve in his name? It's amazing. All the different ways that we can glorify God. It's amazing how our lives can be changed. And how the church will grow when ordinary men and women have that sense of serving the Lord. You know what? When we serve the Lord and we do what we're supposed to do, our church may not grow numerically. There's no promise of that. But I'll tell you what it will do. It will grow spiritually. This morning, um, I prayed that that our churches would become spiritual centers for the community. That we would move from being members of a church to being servants and being active in ministry. God has given us so many gifts, and they're not for our benefit. And we can't allow them to lay dormant. God has gifted every one of us so that we might use them to praise him, to build up the church of Jesus Christ by serving his people. You know, every church has all the resources that they need to do their job. I believe that. But they're not all being used. May we discern God's call on our lives and then faithfully follow. May we endure and finish the race without getting waylaid and without becoming lazy. May we be people who see their call from God as the highest calling in their lives. People who see servant ministry as a privilege. May we serve with passion and love, faithfully using the gifts and graces that we've been given. You know, I invite you this week to take some time, some time with God, allowing him to search your heart and ask him, ask God, how does he want you to bless the lives of others? How does he want you to glorify his name? I'm praying that God will raise up willing servants who are committed to Christ and dedicated to the Lord's work and willing to serve with gratitude. You know, we're entering the season where we'll be looking for um, new leaders in the church for the next, uh, for the coming year. So I, I would ask you to pray. If you're a member of the CGH charge, I'm asking you to pray about how, what's God calling you to do? How can you faithfully serve now, the scripture reading that we read from Timothy talked about, you know, Paul at the end of his life. But I have to tell you, the prize doesn't only come at the end of our life when we go to heaven and we see, when we see the Lord face to face. The prize is today and every day because we are beloved children of God. And once we have said yes, our life never ends. That's the prize. So how do we live it fully? 
Is the Lord speaking to you this morning? Is he laying something on your heart? Have you surrendered your heart to him? And I just got to ask, do you know him? Do you know him? Today's the perfect day to give your heart and your hand to Jesus. Oh Lord, may it be so. Amen and amen. If you have not um, put your prayer request in, please do so as Kylie plays Here I Am, Lord. Denise is singing. Kylie's just running the computer.
here we are, Lord. Here we are, Lord. We have heard you calling. Lord, make us responsive. You have made us in your image and you have given us a, your creative spirit. You have molded us and shaped us with so many gifts. Help us to use those gifts to make a difference in this world, to make a difference to your people. Open our hearts. Enable us to see the needs of those who surround us. And then guide us. Guide us, Lord, so that we use our time and our gifts to share your love with others. May we be open to new possibilities, new ideas, new ways of knowing and sharing your love, new ways of serving. Encourage us to accept the call that, that you've placed on our lives so that we become laborers with and for Christ. Restore in us a joyous awakening to the wonder and awe of what our lives are and what they can be. Because we know, Lord, that all things are possible with you. We lift up the names and the situations which have touched our lives and our souls. May your abundant love just flood over these people until they are more than filled as you strengthen and restore and heal and challenge. Oh Lord, we thank you for all who serve, the men and the women who have served us by serving our country and protecting us. And Lord, we also know that um, our country has not always followed the ways your ways. And so we ask for forgiveness for that. And we would ask that you would empower us to truly be your people and that we could um, make America great as we proclaim your love. Lord, we lift up Hannah and her husband as they travel across the United States to his new posting in San Francisco as a Coast Guard. And we lift up Becky and Joy. We pray for Carrie and the boys and Lisa and Alexis. We'd ask for your blessing to be upon Brandy and her unborn baby. And we lift up Haley and Angel and Sophie and Mason and Steph. We ask for traveling mercies for Maya as she goes to Louisiana. We pray for Christ Church as they um, prepare to close. We'd ask that you strengthen them and encourage them and help them to find churches that where they can use their gifts and graces, where they can become part of the fellowship. Lord, open our hearts and enter our lives. Enable us to be people who speak the truth in love. Move us from thoughts and prayers, which are wonderful, but move us to action, to being, to doing. May we go forth in confidence to serve you and your people as we witness the great good news. We pray in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever.
Amen. If you are a member of the CGH Charge, I would ask that you send your tithes and offerings to the church office, one of the church offices. And if you are not a member, please donate to your home church or to a ministry that shares the love of Jesus Christ. There are so many opportunities um, to do that. So um, may you be a blessing to others not only by how you use your money, but how you use your time and your talents. Our going out hymn is Christ for the World We Sing, and Denise is singing this. for the world we sing. The Spirit is alive and among us, moving us in the work of justice and mercy. The Spirit is alive and among us, calling us into accountability and forgiveness with the hope of reconciliation and peace. The Spirit is alive and within us, for we are God's beloved. The Spirit is alive and breathing in us to send us out into the world to share the great good news. So go in peace and know that you are loved. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. And Harriet is playing Stand Up for Jesus.
best way we can stand up for Jesus is to become the people we were created to be and to love and to serve in his name. Amen. And have a blessed and safe week.